Hello everyone, what a joy it is to have you again join our program and I'm so delighted because I believe when we get together to hear God's word, we are telling the Father, I'm hungry, I want to know more about you, I want to learn more about you and you're le- hearing the word and the desire to just tune into the program to hear these messages, I believe is the evidence that you are seeking God, you are seeking His will and purposes for your life. And I pray that may what you are looking for today, may you get the answer. And I know you will. Today we are speaking on part two of a very important subject that I, uh, I know the Lord wanted me to share with the people. And I'm sharing its scriptural understanding on the purpose and the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit, part two. I'll say that again. Scriptural understanding on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know, I've never believed that there was a more misunderstood ministry or person in the Bible than the Holy Spirit. There are a lot of characters in the Bible. There are a lot of people who came in the scene. A lot of stories been told. People are very okay with the Father. They know God of the Old Testament, Jehovah, and how He prophesied and how Jesus came. And they are very comfortable with Jesus because He was and then went. But when before Jesus went, he very clearly outlined how he's coming back in two ways. One was he will be coming back in the second coming and then he's going to come back in and through the person of the Holy Spirit. And that's therein lies a lot of issues and controversies in the church, which is not a controversy, actually. It is just the there's there's some who are willing to accept the truth and there's some who just want to outrightly deny it because of some personal reasons but the scripture is true that's why we we are in a very important journey we are doing part two and i believe you you are ready today to go learn a lot And, and i'm telling you you will learn a lot today you will see scripture the way god wants you to see it and when I come back and when I want to, I will be praying with you. I will also share a very particular thing in this message that you will hear. Uh, and I know that once you hear that, and I'm going to come and show you the importance because a lot of people are putting focus on something that is not as relevant as the first part of it. You say, what, are, what is that? Let's go hear the message then when I come back and I'll tell you that. But uh, uh, right now, as you're getting prepared to uh, hear this message, please put away all distraction. Please cut down all the music or the noise around you and, and put up your, away your phone if you are, except for if you are going to follow through scripture in your phone. Get a notebook, a pen, write notes, learn together, get your family together, get your friends together, vibe them, text them, uh, whatever you know how to do social media, get them to hear this message and even television. I believe you will learn something good today. Let's go hear the message and I'll be back to pray and talk a little bit more. Let's go. Glory to God. Hallelujah. I'm so glad we are able to bring to you part two of our very interesting subject we've been uh, reading and going through and learning. And I believe you are ready to hear some more of that. Amen. So we are actually studying and learning from scripture. This topic is uh, part two of this topic, which is scriptural understanding on the person and ministry of the Holy Spirit. Not just any understanding, scriptural understanding on the person and the ministry of the Holy Spirit. You know, it's very interesting when Jesus was here on earth, people saw him, but then he went away and he said, I'm going, but I'm coming back. And most of his disciples couldn't understand what he meant. There's two meanings, uh, actually two meanings to what he said then. One is that he's going and he's going to come back as in the second coming. But the second part of that meaning was that I'm coming back in the person of the Holy Spirit. He said to his disciples, if you love me, keep my commandments and I will love you and I will reveal and manifest myself to you. How would he have done that for us? By coming back in the person of the Holy Spirit. That's what we are reading and discovering. If you haven't heard the the first part of it, I highly encourage you, go in here after this program, go in here the next part of the, the that preaching and I believe you will get the whole understanding because we'll be moving forward in part two. Okay, so we are reading from book of John, chapter 14. I'm just going to take one last uh, chapter and verse that we were studying last time and then we'll go into deeper understanding of the person and the ministry of the Holy, Script, uh, Ho- Holy Spirit, learning from scriptural understanding. Okay, part two. In the book of John, chapter 14, verse 16, it says, uh, let me read verse 16 for you. A little while, 
and you will not see me. And again, a little while, you will see me because I go to the Father. Then verse 18, now I'm, I could have gone to verse 26, but I want to read in verse 18, there's a very important message there in verse 18, which I will read for you. It's, it says, And they said to him, What is this that you say? A little while. Okay? Do you not know what he is saying? See, they are questioning. They are asking him, what is that little while? And now verse 26. I will read verse 26. In that day, you will ask me nothing. Oh, my apology. I've actually mixed up uh, chapter 14 with verse 16. Let me go back, okay? Let me read track. And, and I will read this. I was wondering what is in there. Let's go back. In chapter 14, uh, I'm going to read that from chapter 14 because uh, I made a mistake. I was reading from chapter 16, okay? Chapter 14, verse 16. I was wondering what that was. Okay, everybody makes mistakes. Okay, get back to chapter 14, verse 16. It says, And I will pray the Father, and He will give you another helper. Who is saying this? Jesus. Jesus said, I will pray the Father. Many times I've heard church people say, I prayed and the Holy Spirit came. Yes, you did ask, but the actual prayer was Jesus' prayer who prayed the Father so that we can have the Holy Spirit. So he said, I will pray the Father and He will give you another helper that He may abide with you forever. What is Jesus saying here? He is saying this, I am helper number one. I am comforter number one. As long as I'm here with you, I am helping you. I am your strength. I am going to be, uh, be interceding on your behalf. But when I'm gone, I will send you another exactly like me. And his name is the Holy Spirit. And he will come and help you. He will come and be your strength. He will come and advocate. Oh, he will be your lawyer who will stand by you, who will support you, who will strengthen you. When you are down, he will encourage you. He said that he will come and he will be your helper. Now I'm going to read in a while uh, uh, the characteristics of a helper, the characteristic of a comforter. In the, uh, in the Greek it says paraklit or parakletos, which means another call alongside to help. So the Holy Spirit is called alongside to help us, to be our strength, to say no to sin, to be able to overcome the powers of darkness, temptation, to be ruler over the walks of darkness, just like Jesus was. So the Holy Spirit, Jesus said, when He is come, He will be exactly I was to you. And I'm going to also give you some scriptures where uh, the, the, the scripture that applies as a comforter and helper to the Holy Spirit is also applied to Jesus. Can you say amen? Okay, let's now read that verse 18 I was talking about. Verse 18, I will not leave you orphans. Amen. I will not leave you orphans. I will come to you. What is Jesus saying? He says, I will not leave you orphan and without help, without guidance. I will come to you. But Jesus, you are going. How will you come to us? He said, I'm going to come back in the person of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit will re represent me exactly identically as if I was here with, in physical sense with you. Amen. We need to understand the, the connotation of what Jesus is saying. He is saying, as I am, so will the Holy Spirit be when He comes and be in you and be with you. That I today, see, in, in a person, Jesus was at one place at one time. So He could just do enough for so many. But when He said, I come to you, I will be in you. By coming as the Holy Spirit today, Jesus can be in all of us, no matter how many million and billion of people there are, He can feel each one as if He was there alone by Himself. Amen. That's one wonderful revelation. Okay. So what a comforting word. Jesus says, I will never leave you. I will not leave you as orphans. Never feel that nobody loves you or cares for you. Jesus has never left you. But I feel left. No, your feeling has nothing to do with His promise. What He promised is faithful. Amen. Now let's read verse 26. Hallelujah. But the helper, but the the comforter, but the standby, but the intercessor, the advocate, the Holy Spirit. 
That's the Holy Spirit. The same title helper which is given to the Holy Spirit here by Jesus, Paracletos, is the same word helper in the Hebrew given to God. The Lord is my help or my helper. You see, they are Trinity or, or God Elohim, plural. He is not as if they are free. They are free, but as one. But God revealed himself in Jesus as the helper, in Jehovah Yahweh as the helper. And now to the church, he's revealing himself. Jesus says, God will reveal himself through me in the person of the Holy Spirit. So Jesus is saying, I will come back, come to you. And God is in Jesus and Jesus is in the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit in us. Three in one at the same time in one person, the Holy Spirit. That's miraculous. So he said, I will come in you and live in you. You won't be orphans. So he says, the helper, which is the title used for God the Father, <clears throat> used for Jesus as the helper, is now used to the Holy Spirit. So you see, there are three co-equal in power, co-equal God and for us. And he says, the Holy Spirit whom the Father will send. <clears throat> it can't come by anybody else except the Father, whom the Father will send in my name. So you see, so when you want to receive the Holy Spirit, it's an experience that is done by faith in the Father, asking the Father. You have to ask the Father. We read that, I believe, <clears throat> in the book of John, where it says, you being evil, 11, 13, in the last message when I brought to you, it says that God the Father, that if you ask the Father, for bread, will he not give it to you? I believe he will. And the same message now is for us, applicable for us. If we ask of him, he will give it to us in the name of Jesus. So it says, the father will give in my name and he will teach you all things. He will teach you all things and bring to your remembrance all things that I have said to you. What is he talking about? Many times I have, I, I never knew this verse. So I used to think if I have my, uh, have go through some uh, teaching or education and I don't remember those, I just say, Lord, you will remind me Holy Spirit. No, the Holy Spirit does not remind you mathematics and chemistry. Now you, you need to prepare yourself in that. And when you need wisdom, see, that's something which you call, you need wisdom for that particular thing. Then you ask God for wisdom for that particular subject, wisdom to how to be a better husband, how to be a better child, how to be a better student. But it also requires work. You can't just not study and just ask God to remind you whatever you learned, whatsoever you learned, if you did learn something. No, that doesn't happen. The Holy Spirit is here to remind us of the words of God, of the commandments of God. You, you remember many people say he just reminds us of what Jesus said only. No, Jesus was under the old covenant. When he came to earth, he didn't only preach uh, the New Testament, which we say today is. He took and preached his text from the Old Testament. Everything Jesus preached, he said, I hear the Father, and the Father is the same Father who spoke in the Old Testament, is the same God of the New Testament. I really have a trouble with people dividing the Testaments and saying, God has changed in the New Testament. He's more loving in the New Testament. No, he, God is always the same. He was as loving in the Old Testament and Old Covenant as he is loving in the New Covenant. God so loved the world is still the same God in the Old Testament, the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, the God of Gideon, the God of Jephthah, the God of Daniel is the same God today. It's just the way he had a covenant he was operating under. But under the New Covenant is a covenant of grace, is the covenant of mercy. Amen. Praise God. We are in the better covenant. Okay. So the Holy Spirit is the only one who can teach you exactly what God meant. You know, uh, many times when you go interpreting Bible with just head knowledge, you will miss revelation knowledge. I'll say that again. When you go interpreting scripture with head knowledge, many times you will miss revelation knowledge because the intent, and you can say, well, this means this from the scripture, but how to apply it to see a revelation of Jesus in those scriptures takes the Holy Spirit. You can't get revelation without the Spirit of God. Divine revelation comes from the Spirit of God. When God breathes on you, just like Peter, he stood up when the Holy Spirit had come. He said, 
as it was written by and said by the prophet Joel. What was he remembering? He, they had an experience of the Holy Spirit come and fill them. And he said, remember what Joel the prophet said, this is that. He said, this is that which was spoken. How come he came alive to that? The Holy Spirit revealed it to him. I can say that by faith because when Jesus asked his disciples, who do the people say I am? And they said, one of the prophets. And then he turned around and said, who do you, my disciples, say I am? And, and, and Peter uh, opens his mouth and said, you are Christ, the son of the living God. And you know what Jesus said? Flesh and blood has not revealed this to you, but God has revealed this to you. The Holy Spirit opened up his eyes and he saw this is the Christ, the Messiah, the anointed one of God who is going to save us. That's why he didn't, he was stopping Jesus from dying. He said, I have to die. And, and, and they, Peter said, you can't die, Lord. If you die, how will we get the kingdom back? See, he, he knew he was a Messiah, but how can he die? You know, so he was doing his best. And Jesus said, get out, get behind me, Satan. You are stopping the plan of God. You know, many times we have our plan and we want God to fit in our plan and fulfill our plan. You better get into the plan of God because God's plan is already blessed, already successful. And God knows what he's doing with his plan. Amen. Praise God. All right, let's go on. So we, we see that we've seen certain parts of the Holy Spirit that I want you to hold to because this will help you. Jesus said, I will not leave you as orphans. Jesus said, I will send him as in result to the prayer to the Father in my name. And what else are we learning? That the Holy Spirit will remind you. So what I was saying is many people are, are subtracting or they want to throw away the Old Testament. Hardly ever they go to, the, they just love certain portions like Psalms 21. 23, they love Psalms 91 and some nice, nice scriptures. No, 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 no. The whole word of God. The Jesus said, uh, the word of God is the commandment of God. Jesus also said that. Jesus lived as an example of fulfilling God's commandments. Now the Bible says the commandments of God are not grievous. I know many people say we are new covenant people. We don't need to be bound by the law. God's words are never binding. It's not burden. Let me tell you very clear. God's commandments are not burdensome and they are not troubling. It's a joy to those who love God to do what God desires. Now if you were to please somebody and say, what can I do to please you? then they'll tell you what they want you to do so that they can be pleased. Now, the same way, if you ask God the Father, Father, what is it that I can do that you are always pleased with? You love Him, you want to please Him. You will go and listen to, uh, uh, to what He has already said and you will find multiple places. God says, in these I delight, in, in obedience I delight, in, in, in doing righteousness I delight. So go ahead and do that. And guess what? You will be a blessing and a delight to God. Why? Because what God delights in, you start doing. You are already beautiful. Amen. Praise God. Amen. All right. First John chapter two, verse one. Just I want to take one scripture out of there to get you to see something very interesting that most times we can miss. And I don't want you to miss this. First, Peter, uh, First John chapter two, verse one. And he's talking about when we fall in sin. He says, my little children, these things, uh, my little children, these things I write to you so that you may not sin. Or miss the mark. But if anyone does sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous. That word advocate is the exact word parakletos or paraclete, which was used for the Holy Spirit in the by Jesus in the book of John, which meant I will send you another helper. So the word helper and the word advocate, which means the lawyer who intercessor or the one who goes between us. See, when we fall, don't run away from God. Run towards God. Don't ever hide sin like Adam hid his sin and was hiding in a corner there with his wife. And they said, Lord, we are hiding. He said, why are you hiding? He said, we are naked. God said, did you eat from the tree? They said, yes. They, see, fear and the devil wants you to hide from God. Hide your sin. But the Bible says in the book of, uh, in book of uh, Psalms that they, uh, actually David was saying, when I hid my sin, my bones began to wax old. It began to, I began to get sick. I began to drown more and more in, inwardly. I wouldn't come to God. That's what happens most times. People withdraw away from God's presence because they think they have sinned. But let me tell you, the blood of Jesus has opened the gates of heaven and the, you have audience to the Father, not with your sin, but to get rid of your sin. Amen. The Bible never says bring your sin and give your sin to God. No, he says, confess your sins. 
Get rid of that and offer yourself sinless to God. How do you do that? Getting rid of your sin by confessing it. And once you've done that, just believe you're forgiven and washed by the blood of Jesus and say, Lord, I'm cleansed by the blood of Jesus. And there is never going to be a time when God will ever forsake and not accept anyone that washed by the blood of Jesus. The blood or the life of Jesus makes you worthy. The life of Jesus makes gives you boldness to stand in the Father's presence and ask Him for the Holy Spirit spirit. You know, the greatest gift that man was ever given after the, uh, the fall in, uh, after the fall in Eden uh, and, and the gift of Christ, salvation, after the salvation gift was the gift of the Holy Spirit because the Holy Spirit makes us everything and causes us to and, and, uh, realize and, and come apart and, and live the life that is pleasing to God the Father, makes us understand the purposes of God, gives us direction in life, picks us up when we are weak. That's why I said, when you fall, we have an advocate with the Father. The same thing is applied to the Holy Spirit. He is our advocate. He is the one who fights for us and with us. Amen. Praise the Lord. There's one more scripture I want to show you. Normally we don't see that, but it's applied to Jesus, which is all at the same time applied to the Holy Spirit. It's found in Hebrews chapter 13 and verse 6. Hebrews 13 and verse 6. Wonderful scripture uh, it, 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 that we need to read. It says, so we can boldly say, right? What do we boldly say? We can boldly say, the Lord is my helper. I will not fear. What can men do to me? Amen. Hallelujah. What can men do to me? Who is my helper? The Lord. The same word Lord, a uh, helper here used. It's the same word that Jesus was saying, I will send you another helper. The Lord is my helper. The Lord is my comforter. So let me ask you one thing. Have you said that about the Holy Spirit today? Have you said Holy Spirit? See, I understand many times we pray. It's not, it's not sin to pray to the Holy Spirit, but it's not recommended to pray to the Holy Spirit by Scripture. But you can talk to the Holy Spirit because He's a person. You say, Holy Spirit, I give you myself. I surrender myself that you bring the purpose of God to pass. I just, I just allow you to flow through me. I allow you to reveal the truth to me. I allow you to strengthen me. See, He will not force His way in your life. You have to ask Him. How many times have I have to ask Him? Every day. Every moment, you have to ask Him to guide you what words to say. See, the more you become comfortable with Him, the more you give Him opportunity. And I, I call it living in the consciousness of the presence of God. When we live knowing He is there. Right now, as you are hearing this message, What's going through your mind? Have you felt lonely? Have you felt uh, 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 left by people? Ha have you been misunderstood? Have you been uh, isolated or, or, or pushed away and you feel that nobody loves you and even God isn't hearing your prayer? You've been praying, probably you've been fasting and you felt like you've been in church, you've given your money, but God hasn't seen that. God, your pastor doesn't respect you. The pastor doesn't, is not concerned about you. No, who's going to pray for me? Let me tell you, you don't need them. You have the Holy Spirit. He is your helper. He is going to be there right now. He is helping you. He is raising you up. He is speaking to you. He is saying, if I am with you, who will be against you? Amen. You, you, need to, you need to look at the Holy Spirit the way you look at God Almighty and it, as you would look to Jesus. That's the problem with the church. We will gladly look at the Father and say, He's my helper out there in heaven. We will say, Jesus is my helper. But nobody in their right mind today wants to say, the Holy Spirit is my helper. The Holy Spirit fills me now. He is with me now. He will guide me today. He will heal me today. He will be my victory today. Hallelujah. You better be saying that right now. You better get excited about the presence of the Holy Spirit. Oh, blessed Holy Spirit. He is your helper. Come on, say with me. The Holy Spirit is my helper. He is here with me right now. He is going to guide me. He, I don't need to be worrying about do people love me or not. The Holy Spirit loves me. He guides me. He is the joy of my life. Hallelujah. Amen. I believe you are encouraged. Amen.
Let's go a little further into scripture. Uh, you know, I'm going to show you as in a proof. I'm not sure whether in this part, but I will surely share with you how there are biblical evidences that when you were filled with the Holy Spirit, there was a very literal sign. People could see it. They could hear you being filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit. Even Apostle Paul used to go around and, and, and tell them, are you filled with the Holy Spirit? He said, no, we just received the baptism of John. In, in Ephesians, I'm going to give you scripture. And, and then he said, uh, if you're not, then he said, John is good, but that's into Judaism. But I want you to be baptized into Christianity or into Christ, the Nazarene, the way. Amen. The way maker. Jesus, the way. There is to preach. There is a way to heaven, a part of good works. The way is Yeshua, Jesus. Amen. Yeshus. So, so they believed and so they were baptized into. Baptism means you become apostle and you convert from what you were believing. Even if you were a Jew, when you become a believer of Jesus, you get baptized into Jesus saying from today, I am following Jesus. That's why baptism is a big word. It's a big thing. You need to be baptized if you believe in Jesus and you say you are a believer, get baptized. Let people see you being baptized and from that day, don't turn back. Okay. The next baptism was, and then he said, uh, are you filled with the Holy Ghost? He said, Holy Ghost, never heard about that. He said, okay, now you shall be filled. And when they laid his hands and prayed for them, and they were filled, and the Bible says, and they all spake with different tongues. I'm going to give you so much evidence that you will not be able to deny that when you receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit, there is another uh, experience, a part of, of, of just water baptism and being Holy Spirit filled. You can receive the gift of the Holy Spirit where you begin to speak in an unknown tongue. I'm telling you, a lot of people are ashamed about pray, praying in tongues or speaking in tongues. They say, we don't understand. It's blurring out things that you are doing it of your own self. Yes, there has been errors. Yes, I would acknowledge there has been people abusing the, 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 the baptism of tongues. People have, have even uh, manipulated what tongues should sound like or is. But I'm telling you, just because there is a counterfeit does not mean there is not a genuine. There is a genuine baptism of the Holy Ghost where you pray in the Spirit, where you speak in the Holy Ghost in tongues and it fills you. You will feel force and power come inside of you and you, when you don't know what to pray in your natural words, in your natural understanding, the Spirit of God comes and begins to pray through you and you pray the will of God and you pray the purposes of God. For hours you can be praying in the Spirit. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. All right. Book of Luke. I I'll show you how, how important it was for Jesus that His disciples be filled with the Holy Spirit. Very important. He didn't, he didn't muck around and say, well, uh, if you want to. No, he didn't say that. He said, you better get this. You don't go. He, he said, let me, let me just go there. Let's go to Luke chapter 24. I want you to read this with me. This is not playing games time. This is very serious matter. Uh, and I hope and I pray that as you hear this message, you're not making a joke and taking this lightly because it was serious to God. It was serious to Jesus that you receive the Holy Spirit. That you, you don't ever leave as orphans. Let me tell you, he said, I will come to you in the Holy Spirit and that will be the sign that you are not alone and that I am with you. You know, if you don't even know the Holy Spirit, you haven't even received the baptism of the Holy Spirit, you are very orphanish. <laughs> you, you, you feel alone and you feel despised by God or, or forsaken by God. Don't feel that. If you receive the person of the Holy Spirit, because Jesus promised him, He's the promise of the Father to us. Amen. In the book of Luke, chapter 24, I'll read from verse uh, 47 to 49 and listen to what he says. He says, and, and that you go ahead and preach about uh, that I've risen, but also that repentance and remission of sin should be preached. This, uh, you see the difference? Repentance and forgiveness of sin. You have to repent. Your sins need to be forgiven and should be preached in His name to all the nations beginning at Jerusalem. So you begin from where you are. And then He said, And you, for you, for you are witnesses of these things. What were they going to preach? We saw Jesus come. We saw Jesus die. 
We saw Jesus raised up. And we are here to say as witness that Jesus, that Jesus is alive. And Jesus is the Messiah. Amen. So one part, I just, why I'm focusing on this word witness, because very soon as we read the book of Acts, witness is coming back. And, and, and to be a witness is not to just go and tell others, just, just the secondary part. To be a witness is to stand in confidence and make the persuasion that you are persuaded with as a, you become your proof to persuading others. See, many people want to persuade others, a, a witness to others when they themselves have not witnessed the power of what they are speaking to others. See, they talk about salvation. They talk about prayer. They talk about fasting. They talk about uh, uh, intercession and the tongue, gift of tongues and the gift of prophecy, but they have no experience whatsoever but they have learned it from a book. That's not Christianity. That's why we have so much fake Christians walking around. They have no relationship with Jesus, but they call themselves Christians because they either they are wanting to get married to somebody or they are going after some position or they want to be famous by going to church or it's a social thing nowadays to go to church so that you can get a white wedding done. Come on now. It's not a joke. This thing is serious. Jesus says, you... Go and witness what you have experienced. Don't go say anything that you have not experienced. And I'm telling you, many people have made a fake Jesus out of their life because why is not Christ real from you or through your life? Because you are not a witness. You haven't experienced water baptism probably. You haven't experienced power of prayer. Prayer prayers, prayers, prayers answered. See, when you don't have these experiences, you can't really witness. And, and all those door knocking doesn't make any difference to anybody unless it it is backed up by power of your own life that you have experienced. Amen. So these disciples had experienced Jesus' miracles. They have experienced them themselves going out and casting out devils and praying for the lame and the sick and the leper and they're getting healed. They had experienced the, 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 the tragedy of seeing Jesus crucified on the cross and on the third day rise up. These are the apostles who's, who felt the fear of being caught and yet they saw. They were, they were fishermen. They weren't some educated people. They were hiding after Jesus was caught but they saw that his tomb was empty they saw him rise and they touched him and felt him and ate with him and heard his word and this is the words he was saying now go up to Jerusalem stay up there until the next part let's read the next part and you shall be witnesses behold he said, look, I send the promise of the father who is the Holy Spirit the Holy Spirit is the promise of the father I love that. Who is the Holy Spirit? He's the promise of the Father. See, many people are looking for many promises. Look at this. This one scripture that just, 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 it's, it's, it's like, a, it's, it's, it's like a chocolate icing on the cake, you know. This is so tasty. It's talking about the promise of the Father. Of all the promise. Even, even Jesus, he's saying he was the promise of the Father for salvation. But he's saying, listen, you go and wait because I will send you the promise of the Father upon you. But you tarry in Jerusalem until what? Until you are endowed with power from on high. Until you have been clothed. Until you have been baptized. This is the same Jesus whom John the Baptist said, He is the one who will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and power. Woo! And fire. May I tell you, we, we all look for water baptism. Why don't, the, why doesn't the church get excited about the baptism of the Holy Spirit? Because that's the spirit, baptism of power. That's the baptism where you will say no to sin, where you will turn your back to the world, where you will say Satan enough is enough. You will not torment the people of God. Amen. I tell you, that is exactly how we should be acting. That's exactly how we should be preaching the gospel. Woo! And doved. I mean, empowered, clothed, baptized, anointed with the Holy Spirit. Woo! Everything you do, you do it in the Spirit. Why? Because if Jesus was here, you'd do everything. Jesus would have done everything. He did everything he did. Bible says he through the eternal spirit offered himself to God as a living sacrifice. He didn't do, you know, there is not one recorded miracle except after the Holy Spirit had come on him. You, you never see his, his fight with the devil. 
It's after the Holy Spirit had come on him and his death on the cross. It wasn't human ability, but he just surrendered himself to the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit, have your way through me. Let the Father be pleased. And he said to his disciples, let me tell you something. You don't even do, you don't even try to go out and be a witness. Don't even go try, no matter how much you pray, no matter how much you fast, no matter how much of an organization you create, and no matter how many ideas you have. Don't you ever go and dare out there and preach without the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen. I tell you, it's time that the church stops all these uh, uh, the so-called ideas, so-called uh, uh, workshops we have. You know, uh, let me tell you, the best leadership training is the training of the Holy Spirit leadership. The, the, the church should be trained in the leadership of the Holy Spirit. Uh, I'm not against leadership training. It's good. But I'm telling you, we have a leader, Jesus, and He's leading the church today. How? By the Holy Spirit. And we have all lots of training. I'll tell you, good, good we have leadership training. But all this training, all that training will amount to zero in the value of God if the Holy Spirit is not guiding and leading our lives. It's not head knowledge. It's the Spirit guiding. It's the Spirit revealing. Can you say amen? Hallelujah. I love it. All right. So uh, I, uh, I have to probably end around here, but I, let, let's go ahead and read this and see how, how far we can go. In the book of Acts, chapter 1, verse 4, we read, And being assembled together with them, Jesus, He commanded them not to depart from Jerusalem, but to wait for the promise of the Father. Which he said, you have heard from me. Okay. Next verse. Verse 5. For John truly baptized with water, but you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit not many days from now. What baptism? A Holy Spirit baptism. He will come and clothe you. He will come and immerse, immerse you with His presence. Just like you will be soaking wet with the Holy Spirit. Amen. Uh, I tell you, that experience in the, uh, 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 that they received when the Holy Spirit came, it is so powerful. Let me I'm going, when we get there, I'm going to give you some examples of stories that happened ar around about then. It's just powerful. It's just full of power. L look what, what else he says. Verse 5, we've done that. Uh, let's see. Chapter 1, verse 4. Verse 4. Uh, verse 4, we've done. Verse 5. Acts chapter 1, verse 4, 5. Let's go to 8. But you shall receive power when the Holy Spirit has come upon you. Okay, here we go. Very famous. And by now I know most of you, oh, well, I, I know that verse. Don't you say that, okay? <laughs> Calm down. Let's read that slowly again. Now Jesus said, but you will receive what? Dunamis, power, endeavorment. Uh, when the, what? When the Holy Spirit has come. No power without the Holy Spirit. You can have human power. You can have feeling and emotion, but you cannot have genuine, life-transforming help from heaven power without the Holy Spirit. Make the, I'm, I'm very clear about that. And you make that clear in your mind. No matter how much you woke up education, no matter how much theology you know, no matter how many debates you have won, no matter how smart you are swinging the people by your ability and eloquence of your preaching, it amounts to nothing without the Holy Spirit breathing on that message, without the Holy Spirit speaking through you, without the Holy Spirit bringing light through you, okay? So it it's the, has to be the power of the Holy Spirit, not human ability. And this is what Jesus said. Now, why I said you will go witness and, and be a witness, let's listen to this. But you shall receive power of the Holy Spirit has come upon you and you, you shall, read, you see, what are you reading? You shall be witnesses to me. He didn't say go witnesses for me. He says be witnesses for me. I'll say that again. <laughs> Jesus didn't say when the Holy Spirit comes, you'll go and be witness to people. No, 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 no. He said you will be, you shall be a witness. That's what God is for. Holy Spirit makes you a witness. You, your life transform, your body heal, your mind in, in peace, your words changed into good words. You never swear out of your mouth. You 
you never lie out of your mouth. The Bible says everyone that was touched by Jesus, but was touched by the Holy Ghost, they were changed. I give you an example. Nicodem uh, Nicodemus was one. <laughs> of course, Zacchaeus. Nicodemus was well, actually he came at night. He was afraid of people. But Zacchaeus, he was a tax collector, extracted more money than he was supposed to extract. But when Jesus came in his house and sat down to have tea, his life was changed by the presence of Jesus. And he became a witness. He became, he was a witness. And Jesus says, today salvation has come. Well, how did salvation come? He started giving away everything. See, there is always a change. You can't call yourself a believer of Jesus and swear at the same time. You can't call on the name of God and lie and cheat and, and, and commit all kinds of gross sin and say, well, God loves me with the same mouth. And you say you believer of Jesus. What kind of witness are you? I'm, I'm telling you, when the Holy Spirit comes, He changes you. He makes you exactly like you're supposed to be in the image of the Son of God. He, even if you do we have weaknesses, you can repent and he, he will, uh, God will forgive you and let the Holy Spirit fill you and guide you and lead you all the way through. Amen. So the first thing the Holy Spirit does with power is makes you, you be a witness. Don't go only become a testify about or go witnessing. No, be a witness. Be a living testimony. So it, it, as for example, if somebody puts you up on a stool, people will look at you and say, man, look at that, that man. He was a liar. He was a, a abuser. He, he used to drink. He used to cheat. He used to steal. But today, look at him. He's a changed person. There must be a change. If there is no change after you come to Christ, I doubt your salvation. When you become a believer of Jesus, your life is changed. Your thoughts are changed. Your, I mean, I tell you, the Holy Spirit is the spirit of change. He is your helper to make you exactly like Jesus. People should see Jesus in you. The disciples were so filled with God that, that the priest took notice and said, they are different. Aren't they normal men? Who, but they, they took, the Bible says they took notice that they had been with Jesus. Well, something happens when you have Jesus, the comforter, the helper by the Holy Spirit with you. Your life is different. People will say, man, you've changed. Not the bad change. you got a good change. Amen. And I believe for everybody. I believe for you that when, as the Holy Spirit fills you, as you allow Him to fill you and change you, He comes in power and brings a change. And you be the witness, your life, your way you rear your children up, the way you ha handle your relationship as husbands and wives, the way you become an example to the world that is in darkness and without Christ. You, the church doesn't have a good testimony because there is nothing different about the church and the world. There was a very diametric opposition to the light and darkness when the church was born. What they said is holiness was holiness. And when the world says this is sin. I mean, there was a big separation. That's why when Paul writing to the Corinthian church, he said, what communion has light with darkness? What fellowship has the children of light with the children of darkness? There was no communion. But today, everybody's a friend, a friend. We are all loving people. Yes, we are loving people. I never t tell you to go hate people. All I'm saying is, you cannot approve of what God disapproves. You cannot call sin uh, the best. Uh, it's okay. You can't say okay to sin. Well, I tell you, God is God. Uh, but you can't make yourself right until the Spirit of God comes. That's why Jesus said, I'll give you another helper. You need a whole lot of help. Peter needed help. <laughs> Paul needed help. He was out there in his religious horse. I mean, he was religious. But he was religiously wrong because he was going about killing the disciples of Jesus saying, you are a new God in the Jewish faith. So he wanted to get rid of them and he fell off his horse and the Lord Jesus spoke to him and said, well, you can't do this. You can't kick your uh, uh, legs against the uh, brick and, and not be hurt. He said, but who are you, Lord? He says, I'm Jesus. Now go to this particular place and I'm going to show you how a man named Ananias came and prayed with him and he received the Holy Spirit and his life was changed. I tell you, child of God, we need the Holy Spirit. You can't be a witness of Jesus. You can't really preach Jesus without the Holy Spirit. The Bible says when the Holy Spirit is come, you shall receive power. Amen. We shall receive 
power. And what does the power do? Makes you a witness. Well, I can keep going, but, but what we'll do is we'll make a part three of this. And when we come back and make part three of this, I'm going to prove to you that, uh, by scripture, and we're going to do a good study, how that when the Holy Spirit came, when they were filled and baptized with the Holy Spirit, each one of them prayed in tongues or spoke in tongues. And I'm going to give you definition of the different types of tongues there are, how the, there is an interpretation of tongues, how uh, tongues, there's a gift of tongues. Then there is a tongue where it's a known language that uh, when you speak in the, the gift of tongue that somebody can hear and say, oh, well, that's my language. Then there is a special tongue which no man understands, only a believer prays, his spirit praying direct to God's spirit, uh, to God and no doubt devil and not even your mind and your head can stop that prayer. Praise God. Well, I'm telling you, this is exciting times. We need the help. Don't you need help? And the Holy Spirit is the helper. He, he's right there beside you, sent by Jesus. Would you receive him today? Would you, when you receive the blood, as I said last time when we were preaching, uh, and I told you about the message, wherever the blood used to touch, then they applied the oil. Don't you, you can never have the Holy Spirit without having your sins forgiven out of your life and Jesus becoming the Lord of your life. That's the prerequisite. That's the requirement. You don't have Jesus, you can't have the Holy Spirit because Jesus and the Holy Spirit are the same. Same spirit. They are same. They are one, yet two way they have revealed him, themselves to us. Amen. Well, I'm glad. I'm so happy that you are learning the word of God, that you are being encouraged right now, that you will seek after God. Just like Jesus said, if you are, if, if somebody, you being evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more the heavenly father will give to you the Holy Spirit if you just ask God. Come on now. Go ahead and ask Him. Say, Holy Spirit, uh, Lord, uh, Heavenly Father, I believe in Jesus. I receive forgiveness from you. Lord, if I've done something that is not right before you, forgive me and get rid of that and receive Him and walk in His power, walk in His goodness. And your life will never be the same. I'm telling you, your life will never be the same walking in the Holy Ghost. I'm telling you, Paul needed that. There was no salvation, no change that could have ever come. We could have, we'd have never had the book of Acts. We've never had the exploits of the disciples. We'd never have letters written until the Holy Spirit. I'm telling you, the New Testament church was a test, uh, church, which is even today, church regulated, guided, led, uh, empowered by the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. They, they were more conscious of the Holy Spirit than they were conscious of the effects and the persecution that was going on. Today, you pinch a little believer, they shout, ah, I'm going to leave the church. <laughs> In those days, they would die before they would ever say with their mouth, I'm leaving the church. They would die before they would deny Jesus and go and marry somewhere else. They would never do that because their faith was not something of a show. Their faith was genuine and real because they have not only been baptized with water, they were baptized with the Holy Spirit of power, of guidance. I'm telling you, child of God, today, wherever you are, get ready, receive this gift of God's grace and mercy, the promise of the Father we read, the helper, the paraclete, the stand by the counselor, the strengthener. When you feel weak, he comes alongside to help you, lift you up. We don't need men's help. Well, they are good. They do help. But when, you, when there is no help from men, what do you do? You quit? No, you don't quit. You go to the help. The Lord is my helper. How is he your helper? Jesus is your helper. Who else is your helper? The Holy Spirit is my helper. Oh, Holy Spirit. He flows in power. Jesus knew you couldn't make yourself right even if you tried. You couldn't do anything right. You could do a couple of days, but then you'll get back to your own bad self. <laughs> it self needs to be crucified. You need the power and the power is the power of the Holy Ghost. When He comes, He fills. When He comes, He guides. He's the true shepherd. Jesus was the shepherd. He's the shepherd that guides. Didn't he guide the New Testament church where it is today? Didn't he breathe, breathe on, the, on the apostles? And didn't he breathe on the people in the Old Testament when they wrote? They were moved by the Holy Spirit. Child of God, today don't deny his presence. Don't put him off as a thing. He's a person. He's coming into your lives right now. He's going to change you as you receive the Holy Spirit of God. Hallelujah. God bless you. Welcome back. 
Amen. I believe you are inspired. I believe now you feel Jesus as your real close helper through the Holy Spirit. Now, there was something I told you in the beginning of this uh, uh, service or this message that I want to talk to you. And, and I want to talk to you from the, the book of Acts chapter 1 verse 8, where Jesus was telling his disciples, when the Holy Spirit has come, you shall receive power. And that's probably where most believers or most uh, people stop. We shall receive power. Oh, power, 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 power. And they stop there. But what is that power for? That power that Jesus was saying you will receive. Let me tell you what that power is. He said, you shall receive power and you shall be witnesses. Not go do witnesses, be witness. So a lot of people are looking for power to go pray for the sick, cast out devils. But did you know Jesus said these signs shall follow them that believe? He didn't say these signs shall follow them that I know we do those walks. Uh, in the power of the Holy Spirit. But do you remember also that when these disciples were sent in authority of Jesus, they did not receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. They were operating under the covering and the authority of Jesus. So the authority of a believer, you could actually say, is the sign of a believer who believes in Jesus. And there's just a name. He can cast out devils. He can pray for the sick and God's grace and mercy will heal them. But here, when Jesus is saying, you shall receive power and what you do with it, and you shall be witnesses, not go witness, no go door knocking. Hello, do you believe in Jesus? Can I talk to you about Jesus? That was secondary. That was not even the purpose of Jesus. He said, you will have a life transformed by the power of the Holy Spirit. You will have a thinking like the mind of Christ. You will speak words of life and not words of death and gossip and anger. You see that? That power is life transforming. It is making what was destroyed by sin and raising up a body, a body of Christ in you, making you exactly like Jesus. That's the power of the Holy Spirit. Child of God, I know many times people are looking for power. They only stop, we shall receive power. Whoa, you're going to witness. You're going to go and preach to other people. No, 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 you are the first person you need to preach to because your preaching is not good to others when you yourself are not following what you are preaching to others, you know? <laughs> That's a big problem in the church today. We tell our children, well, don't lie. Children, do the right thing. And guess what the parents are doing the same wrong thing that they are telling their children not to do. You know, you can't do that. You, you can't be smoking and telling the world not to smoke. You can't be committing sin and telling the world not to commit sin. The Holy Spirit is the very difference maker in, the, in this Christianity or this faith that we believe in. In the, being a believer of Jesus, the differentiating mark about from others are this, that we have received God inside us to be what we can naturally not be. Righteous, holy, living, pleasing to God, be full of God's nature in us and being a blessing into the world. See, our life should be spoken of just like Christ's life was spoken of. Yes, there will be certain criticisms. Jesus said many people will hate you, but he didn't say that everybody will hate you. You know, but you will have a good testimony. Our life should be the living testimony for God. Jesus is today the living testimony for the Father. He glorified God. Our life should be a life which is glorifying God in every respect, in every way. Child of God, let me tell you very clearly, the Holy Spirit makes you a witness. You are the witness. Your life is a testimony. It should reveal the healing power of God. It should reveal the prosperity of God. It should reveal the cleanness of God. It should reveal the holiness of Jesus. It should reveal the purposes of the Father in you. I know we are not all perfect, but it doesn't mean that we can't be. God gave us the Holy Spirit to start there. So let's start there, okay? Let's start there. Let's, let's pray and ask God, say, Lord, Help me. I ask you, Holy Spirit, to come. Be Lord over my life. Make Jesus real to me. Remind me what Jesus wants. See, 
read the scripture and then ask him to remind you. Don't just say, remind me. I haven't read the scripture, but somehow miraculously remind me. <laughs> what is going to remind you if you don't, if you've not ever read that, okay? So, so we better read and we're going to wait on the Holy Spirit for him to guide us into all truth. I believe you're getting it. Let me pray for you, Father. As people are listening to this, they have listened to the message and are listening to me right now as I pray for them. I pray that, Lord, you will stretch out your hand and minister to them. Minister to them in your grace and mercy. Minister to them, Lord, that they will know that I need to be a true testimony, a witness, a true believer of Jesus that displays the characteristics of Christ. It's only possible when we receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. So Holy Spirit, would you fill them now, right now, as they have believed in Jesus, your son, and his sacrifice. Let them deny everything and receive you as Lord and only Savior, only way to heaven. And as they do that, fill them with your Holy Spirit. Baptize them, Father, in Jesus' name. Amen. I believe that. I believe that with all my heart, that God's going to touch your life, transform it. And you shall be a witness. Others will look, your family will look and say to you, wow, big change in you, man. You, you, I, I aspire to be like you. You are a living example of who a believer of Jesus should be. When I read the Bible, I look at you, you are same. There is no difference, okay? That's how you're supposed to be. And you can be with the power of the Holy Spirit in you, a witness for our glory to glorify our Lord and our Savior, Jesus, through our life. God bless you. What a joy I have to, to just say this. Thank you. Thank you for taking time to, to watching our programs and praying for us. And I believe that you have been blessed. Please write and let us know how this program has been blessing you. know, it's a joy always to hear from you and we will respond accordingly. Until then, remember that God the Father loves you. We love you and pray for you daily and that Jesus Christ is Lord. Learn more from God's Word and send us your prayer request by visiting our website www.jcln.org or you can like our Facebook page Jesus Christ is Lord Ministries to keep up with the now word of the Lord for the season. Follow us on Instagram JCLMPG. Better still, subscribe to our YouTube channel JCLMPG to receive the latest teaching of God from the ministry. If you'd like to host Brother Brian for teaching and ministering at your church or host a conference, you can contact our church office 3315202. Hello everyone, uh, I'm Rimmel and today I want to talk to you about renewing of your mind. Uh, Romans 12.2 says, be transformed by the renewing of your mind. How can you renew your mind? I'd like to sing a song for you. The song goes like this. Read your Bible, pray every day. Pray every day, pray every day. So that's it. It's very simple. What you can do is you can spend time in word and then you can pray. So because th this world is trying to offer a lot of trials and tribulations. Satan is every day trying to bring a lot of trials and tribulations into our life. But we have a good news. The good news is Jesus. So what you can do is you can spend time with him. Read your Bible, pray every day, spend a good time with your friends, make good friends, fellowship with good people and come to church regularly. That's where you can learn how can you renew your mind every day. And this is what I, I'd like, this is my message for today. I hope I have encouraged you and uh, thank you for spending time with me. Remember that Jesus Christ is Lord and this is my JCLM Preach Minute. Bye-bye.